first of all, Stormy Daniels was in court. Uh, she wasn't part of the proceedings, but she was a spectator, uh, but of course drawing all the cameras to her when she was there, and she made the statement outside. Um, the main issue today was Michael Cohen, who is a lawyer of uh, Donald Trump, the president here. Um, as we know, his ha office and home were raided um, last week by FBI officials looking for documents in relation to a payment made to Stormy Daniels just before the U.S. election. And the reason that was important is because the proximity to the election raised questions about uh, election uh, campaign finance laws and whether any of that was broken. Now, amongst all of that, today in the in the proceedings, it emerged who his other clients were. One of them was a Republican fundraiser that was known to the media, and the third name that w appeared was Sean Hannity, uh, and that just had jaws dropping over here in the United States because he's a very prominent commentator and presenter on Fox News, a very high-profile person, uh, and he came out if, uh, right after that with all those uh, when his name was revealed to try and make it clear that, you know, I know Michael Cohen, I've known him for a while, um, but, you know, I never have paid him or hired him as a lawyer, but any kind of advice I might have asked, asked of him um, should be protected under uh, attorney-client uh, attorney privilege. So all of that's going to go into the nitty-gritty about the legalities of what that means and does it matter. Uh, to be honest, to the American people, it probably won't matter, except that he's a very popular person here um, amongst certain viewers. Uh, what does matter is that the president is one of the main clients, and what Michael Cohen was trying to do is trying to find out what kinds of documents the government actually has or what kind of materials the government actually has because they don't know what the case is at the moment so they know what kind of case to build up against. And, you know, as we've been talking about Cohen's legal team, they tried to stop prosecutors from looking at that material until that they can review it. But do we know why the judge rejected it? And what's, what's the potential wider implications here for all of this? That's right. So Michael Cohen tried to stop the, the prosecutors from looking at this material, reviewing the material, because, like I said, they don't know what the government actually has, and they're trying to find out what, what's in there. Um, so what the judge said is that uh, she's looking at the option of uh, putting together a taint team, as she called it, so basically a neutral group of legal uh, lawyers who can go through the documents and decide what prosecutors can see or not. But she did say the defense team, as in Michael Cohen's team, would also be allowed to see what that material is. So that gives them some idea of what the case is about. And it's all a lot of legal issues. But why this is important is because we're, this is amongst another case that the president is ha having to uh, deal with, the whole Mueller investigation, the whole Russia investigation. And there's been lots of talk about whether Mueller would be fired, whether that investigation will continue. Regardless of what happens with that, this is a completely separate legal case looking into campaign finance laws, possibly. Um, and so even if the Mueller investigation and the Russia investigation go away, this case is still something the president president would have to deal with. And in a sense, it's actually closer to him. Michael Cohen is an old friend, very close lawyer, uh, and it's actually a bit closer to home for the president.